I've spent the last few years working for one of the largest shockwave clinics in North America, and I've learned a thing or two about the power and untapped potential of regenerative medicine. But the march towards a future where sickness is healed from its root cause is challenged by the influence of big pharma and their deep pockets. So now we're forced to answer questions like, how do we get rid of joint pain, take back our performance in the bedroom, and heal diseases from the inside out without band-aid medications or negative side effects? This show will give you the answers. Follow along as I interview the world's top experts and doctors and how they transformed their lives and their patients' lives using the newest advances in biotechnology. I'm your host, Austin James Wolf, and you're listening to Modern Biotech Radio. Hey, what's going on, Modern Biotech Pioneers? Today, I'm joined by Chris Gethin. He's an internationally renowned businessman, celebrity trainer, and physique transformation specialist. He's also the CEO of Caged Muscle Supplements, and he's the co-founder of Chris Gethin Gyms franchise. He's also the founder of healthkick.com. He's an author, educator, biohacker, and hybrid athlete. How's it going, man? Everything's absolutely fine, buddy. I'm just talking to you from my treadmill desk. Uh, mm -hmm. So hopefully it's not distraction. But up here in Idaho, it's great. You know, a lot of fresh air. The sun is shining. So it's uh, nothing to complain about. Yeah, I dig it, man. It looks badass. Now, let me ask you this. <clears throat> Excuse me. What's a hybrid athlete? What does that mean? So a uh, hybrid athlete or hybrid athleticism is somebody who actually participates in like a lot of strength trained mm -hmm. activities or sports, but endurance as well. So think of like, you know, a CrossFitter, for instance, you know, these yeah. guys are jacked, they're big, but they're exceptional physical athletes as well. So, you know, as an example, I part, you know, I'm 220 pounds at five foot eight. I've competed as a natural uh, professional bodybuilder. Uh, but I also compete in ultramarathon and Ironman triathlon. So a lot of uh, you know, bodybuilders or strength trained athletes consider themselves ornaments where they kind of stay still right. and conserve their calories. I don't do that. You know, I'm always moving. And uh, I think, you know, the most important muscle that we have is not our pecs. It's not our delts. It's our hearts. So, you know, I like to work my heart as, as much as I like to work every other body part. So I try to get a lot of endurance athletes to yeah. participate in strength training right. because of the benefits and vice versa. Right. What are your thoughts on CrossFit? I know a lot of people have either they either love it or they hate it or they have mixed feelings. What, which camp are you in? I like it. I don't do a huge amount of mm. it, but I do a lot of functional work. Yeah. Uh, I, I like to do a lot of kettlebell work. I'll you know wake up in the morning and stand on my head and stuff. Yeah. Uh, but I, I think if you do it the right way, yeah, it can be great. But, you know, if you're looking at the people at the top of the totem pole like in, in the CrossFit Games, you know, yeah. those guys are absolute physical specimens that right. have been doing it for so many years. So in the day of, uh, you know, Instagram and instant gratification, people want those results and they want to do that now. So in effect, people get injured. So it gets a bad rap because of it. But it's not because of the game. It's because of the players. Right, right. That makes sense. Cool, man. Well, let me ask you this. How did, how did you become this, this physical specimen? You know, how, how did you, obviously you weren't born as a bodybuilder uh, or a hybrid athlete. So what was sort of your transformation? Were you always this active? Uh, did you always have this sort of physique? What, what, what took you to this, this point in time? Yeah, I wasn't, you know, the typical person that would participate in team sports. I never really enjoyed it. Too much pressure on myself. And, uh, you, know, I, you know, I guess some coaches can yell and, you know, certainly encourage others. And it didn't really speak to me. So uh, I started racing motocross at a very young age of about five or six years old. And I did that until uh, my early 20s. And it, it was the injuries that I accumulated over years. I spent more time in hospital than I did on a racetrack in the end. That led to physiotherapy, which allowed me to regain the strength in my back because I was bed bound for a couple of months. Oh, wow. And it kind of got me over the depression that I was feeling at that time because I didn't have an outlet for the adrenaline that I needed. I needed that adrenaline fix. And without it, I fall into a deep depression. So uh, that kind of got me out of it. And when I started learning more about, you know, physical training, nutrition, supplementation, hydration, I started to really enjoy the content to the extent that I was retaining it because yeah. in school, I didn't retain anything. I hated right. school. So that's when I went to college and I studied it for three years and uh, then decided to, uh, you know, give myself a form of accountability and compete in bodybuilding shows. And I, even though I never really enjoyed being on stage, I loved the accountability and that sense of urgency of working towards something. So yeah. I did that for about uh, 10 years, just competing in different countries. 
in uh, in bodybuilding and uh, and personal training. You know, I had my qualifications as a personal trainer and a massage therapist. So I was doing that on cruise liners. I moved to Sydney, Australia, opened a gym facility there after a couple of years of, you know, working with my own mobile personal training uh, business. And kind of, it just snowballed from there. I wanted to help more people. So that's when I taught myself how to write yeah. and shoot photography so I could uh, be a part of the publication world and uh, get stuff uh, published, which brought me then to L.A., where I got a contract with Weeder Publications, and it just carried on from there. And it's just become a passion of mine. And it's not something where I have to wake up in the morning and be motivated uh, because it's a necessity. If I want to feel good, if I want to feel my best, have energy, confidence, have a clean brain, I got to move, you know? Right. And uh, more people should because a lot of people are dealing with anxiety and depression and so many mental disorders where I'm sure, I'm not a doctor, I can't make any structure function claims, right. but they'd feel so much better if they got outside, got some vitamin D, moved a little bit, and obviously ate healthier. Yeah, for sure. I 100% agree. Now, let's say someone <clears throat> has been in stagnation. Sorry. <clears throat> Man, I don't know what's going on. So uh, let's, say, let's say someone hasn't worked out for like a year, right? Maybe they had a bad accident, painkillers, you know, they've been stuck in bed, uh, kind of like, you know, how you were for a couple months. What's the best strategy for them to get back into a routine. They haven't worked out for a year. What should they do, say, today to get back into that routine? Okay, usually I don't get them to focus on their nutrition or training. If they've been on, uh, like, painkillers, I definitely focus on their gut microbiome because painkillers absolutely destroy it. And that inflammatory response in your gut can lead to chemical responses in your brain as well. Right. So, you know, I always consider the gut as a primary brain. So that would be the first focus. But a lot of the time I get people to do things that they don't want to do. Uh, so they get used to doing things that they don't want to do, such as if they wake up tired in the morning and they have to work out, but they don't want to, they still do it. So that could be, okay, for the first week, I'm going to get you to take a cold shower or an ice bath every day for a week. And then you're not going to hit your snooze button when you want to. If you usually go to bed, at 12 o'clock at night, you are going to go to bed at nine o'clock in the evening. So that's what I usually do to begin with. I create that structure because a lot of the, uh, the reasons why people don't stick to a nutritional protocol or a training program is because they haven't allowed structure in their life where everything should revolve around it. Of course, I'm busy. I have several businesses, but that revolves around my movement, my health, and my nutrition. And people have their priorities the wrong way around because it's not that career that's going to get them to 100 years old in happiness and good right. health, surrounded by good people. It's going to be that focus and prioritize in their own health. Right, for sure. Now, let's say someone works a normal you know, nine to five job and they come to you, they're like, all right, I want your help to transform my body. I'll do whatever you say, um, but I can only work out like an hour a day. What would you tell them to do? What's, what's the ideal routine that you would have someone, you would take someone through? Okay, so what I'd usually do is combine their cardio with their actual resistance workout. So where a lot of people do a set of bench press, and then they sit down and rest for a couple of minutes and then do it again, I actually get them to move the entire hour. Okay, so uh, quite often I'll get them wearing like some sort of monitor, like a MyZone, where I'll get their calorie burn, and I encourage them to try to burn a thousand calories before that hour is up. Now that could be in their bedroom, that could be in the living room, that could be in a garage, it can be working out at home, or it can be at a gym or whatever they're doing, but it must be a thousand calorie burn. So an example would be, okay, let's say today we're hitting chest and we're hitting triceps. So you're gonna do two chest exercises, two tricep exercises, then we're gonna do some sort of movement. So that could be burpees, it could be jumping jacks, it could be jump rope. It could be stair climbers, whatever it is, you know, if they've got a kettlebell, you're swinging a kettlebell, okay, and they're just moving through that cycle, and you know, I mix up the exercises a lot, so it doesn't become stagnant, you know, so every workout is different, and maybe that's going to be cycled every several weeks, uh, so they're just moving, they're engaged, and that stops people from being distracted, talking, and getting caught in conversation, scrolling on their phone between yep. sets, and then all of a sudden that two minutes has turned to three minutes, so it's engaged for that hour because that's your time. It's like you're going to the office and you have to you know, actually be engaged the entire time. Yeah. Now, I know that you have 
you know, you, you've written a bunch on this. I'm sure there's a lot of more information you could talk about. Uh, but as far as like a base guideline goes on nutrition, what do you typically teach people about what they should be eating? Like, you know, the amount of protein per grams or per body weight that they should be eating. Like what, what's sort of the general rule of thumb that you teach people on nutrition? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So it all depends on their activity levels and, uh, you know, their activity levels a lot of the time depends on their lifestyle and their career. If that person is, you know, only able to sleep five or six hours a night, then that training frequency isn't going to be as high and the protein requirement is going to be high. But like as a general rule of thumb, it'd be like one gram of pro protein per pound of body weight. You're looking dependent again on that person's activity level of like the same on uh, carbohydrates, fats are usually naturally occurring. So you could say it's like a 40-40 protein and carbs and 20 ratio of fats. But one of the things that I really do encourage is actually eat food, not product. Hmm. Uh, there's so many, so many functional foods out there and you really have to look deeply on the ingredient list on the, on the, on the back. And I try to encourage people to eat the rainbow. You know, think about eating a rainbow on your plate. Have you got peppers? Have you got broccoli? You know, have you got asparagus? Whatever color you can consider as a fibrous carbohydrate, put it on your plate because there's a lot of polyphenols, a lot of antioxidants. It's going to help with restoration, um, free radical damage. It's going to make you feel better. And obviously, those carbohydrates need to be clean. You can't have trans fats like omega-6 oils. Uh, so I try to encourage people to go organic, humane raised, grass fed, wild caught whenever possible. Because unfortunately, you know, the major consumption of antibiotics aren't by humans going to the pharmacy. It's the consumption that the animals are given. Right. And then we consume those animals. So it's a lot of antibiotics, obviously a lot of glyphosate on the food uh, today, the vegetables, the pesticides, the herbicides. And, uh, you know, if you're getting farmed salmon, for instance, is very, very high in a pro-inflammatory omega-6 and not the healing anti-inflammatory omega-3 oils. So you have to be very conscious. Same with eggs. Right, right. What are your thoughts on red wine? Red wine, you know, every now and again, that's absolutely fine, you know. But again, you have to look at the source of the wine so is it biodynamic you know because you want to make sure that it hasn't been the grape hasn't been sprayed in herbicides right and pesticides and that isn't in the water that the grape is coming from so there's several good brands out there like uh, dry farm wines you could go to the, your local uh, wine store and they'll tell you what you know what are the biodiverse wines that are there you know so you have to be careful on not just the amount of the consumption of the wine but the source of the wine that makes sense. Do you have a particular favorite grocery store where you get most of these ingredients? Um, well, there's a few places where I get them for, but we've got a local Boise co-op here. I try to eat as local as possible. Yeah. Um, you know, I, there's a place called Cunningham Pastured Meats. That's a local farm and they deliver a lot of food uh, to my place, including organ meats, uh, because I know how it's raised and how it's farmed. You know, I grew up on a farm, yeah. so I'm very conscious of that. Right, right. That makes sense. Do you have a particular favorite meal that you like to enjoy that's very nutritious and all this stuff that you're talking about? You know what? It, it changes. It really does change. Like I just came off a carnivore diet for four weeks. I've never done carnivore before. And I like to do things uh, before actually advising people. Yeah. Uh, and I, I enjoyed a couple of meals there, but I'd say my favorite meal usually is like a breakfast pancake or waffle that my fiance makes. And it's usually egg whites. It's got some oatmeal flour in there, uh, some cottage cheese, a couple of bananas, and uh, a couple of scoops of uh, protein isolate in there. And I'll top that with a little bit of honey if I need to, and some yeah. chopped nuts and chia seeds. And it's, it's great. Yeah, that sounds wonderful. I love honey. Do, do you think that honey is better than blue agave or uh, vice versa? Yeah, it'd be better, I think, because you've got you know a, a lot more polyphenols, antioxidants in there. But then, if you go to like you know a good maple syrup, you've got more minerals in there, so you can get a good combo of both. I try not to go overboard with them. You know, it all right. depends on if I'm on on a calorie deficit, if I'm on a diet, because sometimes I do wear a 24-hour blood glucose monitor just to check the insulin response and. You know, sometimes it can give you a very harsh blood sugar spike, especially if you're not active. So I could eat something like a lot of honey or a couple of tablespoons and get on this treadmill desk 
and it'll come straight back down. Right. But if I don't, it stays up there for a while. So I do encourage people, hey, if you want to enjoy things like that and you still want to lose fat, don't think about, okay, I must do 45 minutes of cardio at the end of the day or at the start of the day. Think about some sort of low level activity after that particular meal and that will have a better response. Right, right. That makes sense. Do you have a particular favorite biohack that you like to do? I'd say, well, I don't know if you'd actually call it a biohack, but like in the morning, I do like to get outside barefoot and earth myself, ground yeah. myself, you know, and uh, get some restorative red light from the sun, which is at its highest peak uh, mm. during the morning at sunrise or at sunset. So that's the one thing that I like to do. However, during the winter here in Idaho, you know, there's no sun coming up. Right. Or I actually have infrared panels at home so I can get that restorative red light. And that will really help set my circadian rhythm so I can sleep better at night right. and get a better collagen production and uh, getting that vitamin D fixed. Nice. Now, what, what's I've heard a lot about grounding. I've never looked into the science behind it. Uh, is it okay if you explain just a little bit of the science behind grounding? For sure. Before I do, there's a great movie out there called Earthing the Movie. You can get it free on YouTube. Yeah. And there's a person on there called Clint Ober who actually wrote Earthing the Book. Yeah. And he really takes a deep dive into it. And this person's got a phenomenal uh, background. And what it does is help, it absorbs, you absorb the negative eons from the earth. Mm -hmm. So lightning strikes the earth, it gives it a powerful charge. And you can absorb these negative eons, which is a very positive, it's a good positive charge for us, especially in a day today, like today, where we have 4G, now we've got 5G, a lot of EMF, a lot of Wi-Fi routers, x-rays. So we absorb all these eons that are no good to us, you know, right. that they can have a, a, a negative effect on our mitochondria, which is our energy source, our engine in our body. And if we don't have that energy source, we, we die. Right. Uh, so it can really, really help with a lot of inflammation. There's a lot of studies that are actually starting to come out about it now. I, for one, a lot of people think I'm wearing a tin hat and I'm a yeah. bit, bit hippy-dippy uh, by doing so. But I feel better for it. And if that's an observational study by myself and that my clients participate and, and feel better, then so be it. Right. No, that's awesome. Now, I'm definitely going to – I've been thinking about doing it. You know, I live in the city, so it's a bit hard to find a you know piece of grass anywhere right yeah. here. And, and like I've got a lot of clients in the same position as well. So when I travel as well, because I fly a lot, I actually – you can go onto like earthing.com, and they actually have earthing mats oh. and bed sheets. So at my desk uh, down there, the, my sitting desk, yeah. I actually have an earthing um, mat as well that I have my feet on. Uh, when I'm working at my desk. No kidding. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay, I'll put that in the show notes for our listeners. Earthing.com. Earthing.com. Yeah, I know Clint's over there very, very well. He's a, um, he's a great person. Really? Yeah. That's good. That's good. Let me ask you this. Who's one of your favorite heroes? Uh, I'd say number one on top of everybody. There's a few that I could name, but Henry yeah. Rollins. I really like Henry Rollins. He was the singer of Black Flag and then later the Rollings Band. And he's an actor, he's a spoken word artist, comedian, uh, he's an author, he has his own book publishing company. And his person is just relentless, you know, he's relentless with his work. When he does a tour, he doesn't like days off, so he just goes at it hard. And this yeah. guy's in his 50s, uh, late 50s now, and he's still pushing it hard. And he makes no excuses, he's just got a very reg regimented form of discipline, that I wouldn't want to have completely because right. the guy lives alone and he's single and that's how he wants it. But that's the only way that he could live with his uh, workload. And I just yeah. like the guy that he's no bullshit. You know, he's straight ahead. He's uh, and he's just a hardworking person, but he's very, very diverse in what he does. So if yeah. something wants to work out, you know, like during this time in quarantine, you know, he's got a radio show there in L.A. He writes for L.A. Weekly as well. There's oh, wow. other things that, you know, that's always going to balance out. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, what is, is that particular trait that you like about him, the no bullshit, you know, very diligent, seems like he's very passionate about his work. Are those the main traits that you admire about him? 
Yeah, and the guy works out. He's, he, he works out. Like, I remember I saw him on stage in 1992 at Reading Festival. Yeah. And when he came on stage, his presence was just something I'd never experienced before. And he's a big guy, great physique at the same time. And it just blew me away and it kind of captured me. And uh, he's written a, a famous poem and uh, it's called The Iron. So if you Google The Iron, Henry Rollins, and uh, this poem will come up and, and that really captivated me as well. And what I like is that even though he has all these things that are going on, it's the workouts that he has his pivotal foot in I every see. day. And that helps him accomplish a lot of things that he does because he's forging his discipline through the pain that he experiences in his work, uh, in his workouts, and, and that's able to have a transcendent effect to, into his work. Yeah, it's funny you say that. I used to not work out, and then when I really started getting into it, like extremely consistently, my ability to achieve and produce shot through the roof. I was much more productive throughout the day, you know, of course, more energy. You probably heard this from all your clients as well, but like your entire life changes. It's, oh, it's really funny how it happens. Yeah, when I see people's, my clients before and after pictures, of course, it's awesome to see that visual perspective, but when you actually hear and read the backstory of their transition, of their complete transformation, of their lifestyle and people around them and their personality, it's phenomenal. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. What's, what's Health Kick? Uh, Health Kick, so that's an online platform where people can get a little bit more of me than what they find online. So that's where I'll write detailed eBooks on particular things that I, I do myself, whether at the uh, controlled intermittent fasting for fat loss or muscle building, uh, cyclical keto approach. Uh, you know, I have various eBooks on like, like now for, the, for this quarantine, like a quarantine survival guide. And I obviously uh, offer my online VIP coaching there, uh, which is, you know, the bandwidth has gone absolutely massive now during this time in quarantine. Uh, so that's what Health Kick is. You know, I have a community there, a group. I do uh, online webinars uh, specifically for the members. So it's where people can kind of interact with me personally online. Yeah. What What made you want to start this healthkick.com? Because I was putting out a lot of free content, a lot of free video trainers. I write for several magazines around the world. However, people wanted to get that customized approach specifically right. to them. Because everybody's different. You know, right. some people don't do well on a, fit, a normal diet. They don't like gluten or dairy, but they love the keto diet. Uh, they, they have only a short amount of time during the day or they have a particular goal that's very specific and not what I've actually put out there. Even though the programs that I've put out there for free definitely work, it's not going to be for everybody. And that's what I always tell everyone. Maybe the best program for you isn't from me. It's from someone else. It's right. someone you're going to relate to. So that's why, again, I never really did well in team sports because I felt like the coach was speaking to everybody different, much like if you go to a concert and you listen to, say, Dave Grohl singing, the lyrics that you're going to hear from him and that you're going to translate is going to be completely different to me. You know, So uh, I, you know, I'd like to kind of funnel it down and tune it, tune it to everybody's uh, requirements. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I love that. Are you a Dave Grohl fan? I do like some of his older stuff. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, yeah, the old, uh, obviously, Nirvana and then uh, Foo Fighters uh, for a Which while. I, I like I like him as a person. Like I see him on a lot of other documentaries. Yeah, I, I, I really like his approach. You know, he's he's involved in so many other bands as well, which is which is pretty cool. Yeah, it is cool. You know, it's funny. I, I've always loved Nirvana. I didn't even know who the Foo Fighters were, ironically enough, until I saw Dave Grohl's performance at the Oscars. He did Black uh, Blackbird by the Beatles, and I was yeah. like, Oh my god, this guy's amazing. Who is this guy? And I was like, Oh, he's the drummer for Nirvana. Oh, cool. Yeah, he's yeah. just weird now. Yeah, no, he's awesome. All right, let me ask you this. Uh, I'm going to ask you one more question before we jump into our uh, behind the scenes Q&A. Uh, what book have you written that you're the most proud of? I'd say it's The Transformer. Uh, the Transformer was like a motivational memoir. Yeah. Uh, I really, really liked uh, putting that together. Uh, and I'd say it all depends who I'm speaking to, but one that was probably the most fulfilling was my most recent one, and that's Man of Iron. Because that uh, kind of documented number one my journey of preparing for my first Iron Man, yeah, and uh, you know how people 
can create a program specifically for them if they're a bodybuilder and they want to do a 5K or a half marathon or a Spartan or you know whatever it means, some sort of endurance aspect. So I really enjoyed writing that because I had to write it out of um, a lot of a lot of discovery and a, a lot of mistakes because nobody's yeah. actually done it before me. Um, so you know I really enjoyed putting that one together too. Awesome. Uh, where can people find these books? Oh, you can find them on Amazon. That's probably the best way to go find it. All right. And for our listeners, I'll put those in the show notes as well. Cool. Um, all right. Before we hop into our behind the scenes Q&A, where can someone find out more about you? Okay. So they can go to my Instagram and that's Chris Gethin, K-R-I-S-G-E-T-H-I-N. Or they can find me at my website and that is healthkick, H-E-A-L. T-H-K-I-K dot com. Awesome, man. Awesome. All right, guys, listeners, you heard that. Go to healthkick.com or find them on Instagram at Chris Gethin. I'll put the uh, link in the show notes as well. And we're about to jump into our behind the scenes. So uh, thanks again for the public interview, Chris. I really appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Anytime, buddy. Thanks, man. Want to see what the top experts have to say behind the scenes? Just go to modernbiotechradio.com and you'll get instant access to every behind the scenes interview for free. Now, these interviews are not for the public, so please don't share. But if you'd like to pull back the curtain with me and learn what secrets they reveal, just go to modernbiotechradio.com and get instant access to these interviews for free. Again, that's Modern biotechradio.com if you'd like to learn the best kept secrets that they can't share publicly but allowed me to share in private just go to modern biotechradio.com and get instant access to all of these interviews completely free i'll see you there